Today, I'm gonna let you see a quick look, slight review of a 2021 Land Cruiser. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Torque Works. Today, I'm gonna let you guys see a 2021 Land Cruiser. And as most of you know, the new one is coming out later uh, this year could be pushed a little bit further out than that to next year for the 2022 Land Cruiser, which will not be offered in the United States as far as we know. So we're going to look at the current model. Uh, there's not many of these that you can find around. Most people are buying them up because this is also the last year it looks like we're going to have the V8. So let's take a look, guys. Hope you enjoy it. And if you can find one, I hope you can pick one up. Good luck. So stick with me until the end of the video. I hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. So let's get rolling. And here she is, the 2021 Land Cruiser. Well, she's beautiful. Nice pearl white. Looks good. Now this is the standard trim. There's one other trim that they offer uh, for the past two years, and that's the Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. Now the difference between this one and the Heritage is of course the Heritage badge. You do get a little bit more chrome, as you can see down here along the door edge, chrome that won't be offered on the Heritage. The Heritage also comes with TRD style BBS Forge wheels that are in a bronze color. Also on the front grille, you have more black accenting instead of the chrome on the Heritage. Now the Land Cruiser does offer high and low beam LED. Uh, you do have projectors on these instead of the reflectors on some of the other Toyotas. It also offers LED fog lights. Of course, your auto folding or manual folding side mirrors. And as you can see up here, the sole tag I'll talk to you a little bit more about that on an upcoming video. Uh, it's a little bit depressing, but I'll, I'll let you guys know why that is. A lot of you guys have been asking about it. All right, let's take a quick look at the engine and I'll show you what will soon to be a dinosaur, I guess, because it does have the 5.7 liter V8 in this one. And as I was saying, let's look real quick under the hood of the Land Cruiser. and lets you see the 5.7 liter V8. Good for 381 horsepower, 401 pound-feet of torque. Uh, if you use premium fuel, just like in the uh, Lexus version variant of this, uh, the more luxurious, even higher price tag version of this, the 570, um, if you use premium fuel, it's good for a couple more horsepower, but I'll let you guys determine that uh, if you wanna use that, because in some states, uh, gas is pretty darn high. This is a great engine. It's tried and true. It's been around forever. It's in the Tundra. It's in the Sequoia. And I really hate to see it go. Um, I'm very happy for innovation and, and for better fuel economy, but I really hate to see all the V8s leaving. What do you guys think about that? Are you ready for innovation and some change, or are we just dead set on, on loving this V8? If you are, leave me a comment. Let's talk about it. I, I love discussing this stuff. Also, what are your plans like in the future? In the next few years, are you looking forward to twin turbo V6, diesel, electrified options and things like that? Let me know. I love this engine personally. It sounds great. This one, of course, there's not a lot of sound to it. The engine, you can hear obviously a little bit from outside, but you're not gonna hear any kind of exhaust note on this one. This is luxury. You guys know this do have the smart key system. Uh, Land Cruiser offers everything that Toyota offers except for one thing does not offer apple carplay so that's a little a little crazy but anyway here we are inside um, you do have crawl control everything that your trd pro tacoma and forerunner has this has all of it and then some you do have your heated steering wheel heated and cooled seats the land cruiser also has um, your terrain select it also has your downhill and uphill assisted control and you do also have turn control. So if you hit that and you're in four wheel low, um, you can actually scoot the left or right a passenger or 
or driver's side rear wheel and it will scoot around obstacles to make you turn uh, in a shorter distance. It's really neat. Very large touch screen. It is really nice. It just does not offer uh, Apple CarPlay, uh, Android Auto, Alexa, any of that. You do have your cameras for off-roading. Like I say, it does have a lot of stuff, so it's not that outdated, but there are some things that may be. Uh, you have your uh, headlight washers. You don't see that too much anymore unless you're in a, a luxury German car or something like that. Parking sensors, auto high beams. Uh, this controls the mirrors on the side. Shut the door and let you hear it. It's a great door shut sound. You have three power seat options that you can set. It really does have a lot of luxury, even though it is a world-renowned off-roader. You do have some wood grain, very small amount, and this one has black leather seats with lanolin. They're very, very comfortable, very soft. Some standard cup holders, very large center armrest, which also has a fridge inside of it to cool drinks. It's insane. And this has everything sunroof of course and i'll take you guys in the back and let you see that and taking a look at the back seat carry on this beautiful leather i mean this is if you sit in this those of you that have never been in one of the newer model land cruisers this is like sitting on an extremely expensive leather sofa it is so supportive and soft but not so soft that you know it's going to disintegrate over the years. I mean, it's got great bolstering and cushioning. Okay, in the middle, you do have armrest with a small storage area. You can maybe put some phones or a wallet or something. New cup holders in this end. Not that you'll ever use it, but you might, depending on, on your situation. Um, I have too many people that ride with me. Controls for the rear. You do have heated and uh, well, I'm sorry, not cooled seats, just heated seats in the rear with your vents, but you also have vents up here, just like the Sequoia and the Highlander. Now, being a Land Cruiser, you do have LEDs, and this one, I'm not sure why, but a lot of the models of Land Cruiser have a black um, roof, and I'm not sure, or a headliner, I'm not sure why this one doesn't. Maybe that's just another option. I did not know you could choose, or probably because if you go with black leather, they feel like you may not want a black roof as well. Now you can fold these flat to give you a nice fold floor, and these do come forward to enter the rear seat, and I'll show you that rear seat here in just a moment. Now to enter, you do have extra steps here for passengers to enter. You have a slightly hidden pull handle here. Now this folds like this, and this is how you will fold it flat and up and out of the way. Uh, it does take up some space, but you get a nice load floor here. But you can easily climb in. Now, one thing I will tell you versus the Sequoia, because this is a solid rear axle instead of the independent rear, like the Sequoia, you have less height from the floor up. So as you can see, this is probably eight inches high, maybe slightly more, I don't have a ruler with me, and don't have a banana for scale, sorry guys. But you can comfortably sit back here. I wouldn't suggest large adults like myself uh, or anyone over like five, six or so to sit back here for a long period of time or your knees are gonna be in your chest. But it is a very comfortable rear seat, very roomy. It does seat three if you squish yourself or two kids um, very comfortably back here. And then to put this back, you just click it into place and boom, she's out of the way. You can also use this to adjust this back for recline. All right, and for the back here, we're gonna look at the hatch situation in the back and the rear seats. Uh, you have a button inside and on the key fob to open this, it's power lift gate, but the Land Cruiser are kind of neat and they have two. See, that one opens up, gives you some cover, some shade, uh, get out of the elements a little bit, but you also have this bottom half door or I guess a quarter door that you can pull this latch and it folds down like a, a trunk or about how far the Forerunner's um, sliding rear cargo deck comes out. You can sit here. There's some cool little items. I'll show you real quick. I didn't want to make a super long video here. Your tools for spares and other things, they're hidden in here. And I really think this is neat because I'm always trying to find a place for a few little added straps or just, you know, little gadgets I don't want rolling around. And that's, that's kind of cool that you can add them here. Um, D 
these are for these rear seats and these are like a jump seat setup. okay? They fold up and out of the way to the left and to the right. You can have one folded up and if someone really wanted to crawl in here, they could enter this way um, or like I showed you just a moment ago into the back. So you have outlets for power and it's got a lot of information about the seats. As you can see, there's a lot of info. It's kind of a big process. So you pull this, push this down. Oh, sorry, I didn't even do it right the first time. My goodness. Push this down, I apologize. Pull the strap, it goes down. Now in the LX and the Lexus, this is electronic, mostly electronic. And then you pull this one and it goes up and out of the way. Now the rear seat up here is blocking the headrest because it's been leaned back just a hair, but it would fold completely up. Let's try this one here. Now this one's a little different because you cannot, fold this one you actually have to take it out and put it back here fold this one pull this and there she is pull that and if the seat belts are out it clicks into place as you can see it's clicked in and then you have a nice load floor lots of cargo area um, you can haul very large suitcases back here but you do give up seating so you could put one down and have a nice big area. Let's see when you do this, it comes down, clicks in, pull your strap, gives you a nice lever. So then you have space back here, but then you still have a nice large area for suitcases. You could stand them up since you have lots of area here and you have plenty of cargo room and still don't give up all of your seating. All right, and that's just a quick look on the 2021 Land Cruiser. What did you guys think? Let me know. One thing I wanted to point out too, just a little quirk of the Land Cruiser is your fuel door, which you open from inside, is actually on the passenger side. I haven't seen that in a while, at least with Toyotas, most of them are on the driver's side. But let's look at the price here on this 2021. If you can see, of course, four wheel drive, it's a Blizzard Pearl, we know all that. Like I was saying, it's not the heritage, but it has everything you can get. The only option are, is the entertainment system that is offered, which goes on the back of the headrest uh, for between thirteen and fifteen hundred dollars. Um, that is not in this one, uh, and it looks like we have uh, MSRP standard price tag eighty seven six eighty five, uh, and with delivery eighty eight five thirty four. So that's not bad. That's just standard MSRP for these guys. Uh, they're just really hard to find. Uh, normally their sales are around the 7,000 mark in the US. Um, it's actually sold more than that just in the few months of this year because people know that these are not offered um, here in the US for the next model year that was just released. So what do you guys think about the Land Cruiser? I'm sure you guys would love it. Uh, it is a little pricey, um, but you know, you kind of, I hate to say it like this, but you kind of get what you pay for. It's a vehicle that's designed for the most rugged environments in the world. And it's also designed for a service life of over 25 years. Um, I don't know how many know that, but it is designed and engineered that way. At the very least, if you drive it right and you do very minimal service to it, just the, the required maintenance, you should at least get a service life of that long. Uh, and it holds its value really well. And it, it will do you right. You'll know it'll start and get you where you need to go every single day. All right, guys, and I really enjoyed you coming out with me today looking at the Land Cruiser. It is super hot out here, uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying all these. Give me a thumbs up if you like them. Leave some comments and let's discuss some stuff. I'd really like to hear from you guys. You guys have a great one. I'll see you next episode.